you know, maybe it's just me, but has anyone else noticed that all of a sudden the mainstream media, they really love Bernie Sanders now that he doesn't pose a threat to the ruling class. Now that he's no longer running for president, MSNBC can't get enough of him. They love him. He's great for ratings, so let's bring him on every single week. I mean, <laughs> compare this to their treatment of him during the primaries, and you'd think he was the worst person in America, perhaps worse than Donald Trump. But now all of a sudden, he's great. Because he doesn't pose a threat to the status quo anymore. The threat has been neutralized. And it's so frustrating, and I want you to take note of this and remember this because it shows you how the media tries to manufacture consent and they try to push certain candidates and get a particular outcome. This isn't objective, non-biased coverage. They had an agenda. They just didn't admit it. Um, but, you know, I don't want to harp away on that angle. I want to talk about Bernie Sanders because he had an interview in MSNBC, and he really is incredibly useful in attacking Donald Trump because it's not the same tired talking points that we see from the Democratic Party establishment. I mean, sure, Bernie Sanders is known to repeat himself, but he has a way of criticizing Donald Trump where I think it's going to land. And Joe Biden is doing well against Donald Trump, not because I think he's running a good campaign, contrary to uh, what most people believe. I don't think Joe Biden is running a particularly good campaign, but this is an anti-Trump election, clearly, which is why Joe Biden is doing really well. People are turned off by Donald Trump. Now, I will say that, you know, I had to take a little bit of a break from Bernie Sanders at Bernie burnout, if you will, because my frustration and even my anger with Bernie Sanders after he dropped out, it, it it felt like a surrender. It felt like he was giving up. And that took a long time for me to get over. And I'm starting to get away from those feelings. They're starting to dissipate. And now I'm just feeling like there's this hole inside of me. And I, whenever I see Bernie talk, I imagine what could have been. Like it wouldn't have been a utopia if he was elected. But the situation in this country would have been just completely different. And again, I know this sounds like, you know, I'm crying over spilled milk, but just like listen to Bernie Sanders responding to a simple thing that he was asked about Donald Trump dodging this debate. And look at how charismatic he is at making fun of Donald Trump. Senator, we have a lot we want to cover, but we've got to get to that breaking news. Your reaction to President Trump now refusing to participate in a virtual debate, saying it's a waste of his oh. time. But Stephanie, that was 12 seconds ago, right? He may have changed his mind by then. I, I mean, I I empathize with Biden. You know, you don't know what Trump is going to do. He lies all of the time. He changes his mind all of the time. He's going to sit down and negotiate a stimulus bill. He's not going to negotiate. He'll be in the debate. He won't be in the debate. But, you know, the truth is, this is somebody who has COVID-19. Uh, we have no idea what's going on in the White House, uh, how he is feeling. Uh, they lie about that as well. I, you know, if I were in Biden's position, and I think the commission, the election commission is right, I, I don't know that I would want to be in the room with him. So I think a virtual debate is appropriate. Uh, Trump did not do well in the last debate. So, you know, he may not want to debate again. Who knows? That was fantastic. Trump will change his mind, most likely. So, you know, when I learned that Trump decided to uh, not go to the next debate because it's virtual, uh, part of that is me thinking that he doesn't want to do any more damage because that first debate was such a train wreck. I mean, a Boston Herald poll uh, put Joe Biden 21 points over Trump nationally. I mean, you don't want to repeat that. So if you realize that you're turning off voters by speaking, you don't attend that debate. But maybe Trump isn't thinking strategically like that because he still won't shut the fuck up. But either way, like the way that Bernie Sanders responded to that, well, I mean, that was 12 seconds ago. Don't worry, he'll change his mind. It's just, it's personable. Like that's what the average American thinks. And that's not to say that Joe Biden hasn't had his moments because at that first debate when he clowned on Donald Trump for wanting to inject bleach, I thought that that landed. That was great. But Bernie Sanders just has a way of speaking to people that is so genuine and authentic. And I think it lands. And he really is able to build this case against Donald Trump that is common sense. Like I, I was talking about in a different segment, uh, how, you know, Mike Pence, the way that he spoke at that vice presidential debate, like the way that he said things, he made it seem as if, you know, the conservative position is inherently the best position. And if you don't agree with the conservative position, then you better defend yourself and explain why you don't agree with the conservative position. And even though Bernie Sanders in, is imperfect here, 
he he makes it seem as if you know what he supports is common sense and whoever doesn't support it needs to explain themselves now he doesn't always do this but i mean just look at what he said about healthcare. he's not even running for president but here he is explaining how trump's covid19 diagnosis and the subsequent treatment that he received at walter reed medical center demonstrates why we need medicare for all the president's message to the american people earlier this week is don't let covid dominate your life the president also received top medical treatment at a 100 percent government funded facility that same care would cost the average American anywhere between sixty and hundred thousand dollars. What do you have to say to that? Well, what I have to say about that, I don't begrudge the president of the United States getting the health care that he needs when he is seriously ill. Uh, but I do very much resent the fact that we are the only major country on earth not to guarantee health care to all people as a human right. All right. The kind of care that Trump got is good. That is the kind of care that every American should get. And that is why I am a strong advocate for a Medicare for all single payer system, which means you go into any doctor's office, you go into any hospital, you do not take out your wallet, you do not take out your credit card. It is 100 percent publicly funded, available to all, whether you are rich or whether you're poor. But I think, Stephanie, this whole COVID-19 crisis above and beyond Trump's illness tells us how dysfunctional the current system is. Millions and millions of people have lost their health care because they have lost their job. And what I think the American people understand is that health care is a human right, not a job benefit, not a privilege. All of us, rich, poor, old, young, are entitled to health care, whether we're working or whether we are not. And the momentum for a Medicare for all single payer system is growing stronger every single day. We should not be paying twice as much per capita as our neighbors in are uninsured or underinsured. And we pay by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. The American people know that. Now, that to me was brilliant. Now, I think about at that first presidential debate, which was a clusterfuck. But when, you know, uh, Donald Trump said you support socialized medicine your party does joe biden joe biden ran away from that and he wouldn't even you know explicitly endorse the public option which he supposedly supports and i think you know what would bernie sanders have done bernie sanders would have been a lot more successful in that situation because bernie sanders would not have run away from medicare for all in fact he would have gotten donald trump to explain why he doesn't support Medicare for all. Like, you always want to make sure that you're not playing offense. You want to make your opponent play defense. And when it comes to something like Medicare for all that's overwhelmingly popular, where a plurality of Republicans support that policy, I mean, if you are the one playing defense, you've lost. You've already lost. It doesn't matter how popular the position that you're taking is. So, like, I think about the differences. And Bernie Sanders would have not only been able to defeat Donald Trump thoroughly, but he would have been able to effectively build a large consensus around his agenda because he makes it seem as if these things are just common sense. Now, uh, one more clip I want to play before I give you the takeaway uh, about the stimulus. Let's shift gears to the latest on coronavirus relief stimulus. The president has closed the door on a large comprehensive stimulus package, but he did ask Congress to pass a standalone airline relief bill. Speaker Pelosi seems open to that. While the 50,000 jobs in the airline industry are hugely important, what do you think about the fact that we could see a separate carve out for the airline industry that has huge lobbying efforts, huge influence in Washington, and nothing for mom and pop's shops that are closing every single day? We've lost over 100,000 small businesses already. It's unbelievable. And I think, you know, every day we get overwhelmed by some crazy thing that Trump says, and we all focus on that. But your point is well taken. Uh, in my state of Vermont and all over this country, small businesses have shut, and many of them are not going to reopen. Again, millions of people have lost their jobs. In the wealthiest country on earth, you got folks today who have lost their health care. They are worried about being evicted. They are worried about putting food on the table for their kids. So I, you know, the truth is that the House of Representatives, I think four months ago now, did the right thing. They passed a comprehensive bill, including protecting workers in the airline industry, which we have got to do. But we have to protect small businesses. 
We have to protect those workers who have lost their jobs by extending that $600 a week supplement to unemployment that was previously the case. This matters because Bernie Sanders is always able to tap in to what the average American is thinking. He's not out of touch. Now, I will give Joe Biden and Kamala Harris credit because they have a lot more populist rhetoric that they use than Hillary Clinton did in 2016. So I think they're running a better campaign than Hillary Clinton. But nobody has perfected the art of populism and speaking to the specific needs of Americans, average Americans, working class Americans, Americans who own small businesses than Bernie Sanders. He's just it's an art to him. And he's just so much more effective at promoting a working class agenda than Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Now, the point of bringing this up is not to say, man, think of how amazing it would have been, because of course, I, I think about that all the time. Imagine what could have been if Bernie was the nominee. He would have certainly won. And if he was president, ugh, we could accomplish so much. But the point of this is Bernie Sanders is no longer going to be president. But I want to make this video because Bernie Sanders isn't going to be the last progressive to ever run. And if you ever want to win, copy Bernie Sanders. Copy the rhetoric that he uses. Speak to specific policies that Bernie Sanders advocates for. I mean, going back to the vice presidential debate, there's no reason for Kamala Harris to get defensive when Mike Pence says you support the Green New Deal. There's no reason for her to get defensive when Mike Pence says you support a ban on fracking. They don't support a ban on fracking, but if people think that you support a ban on fracking, that helps you. I mean, there's a reason why Donald Trump's attack that, you know, Biden is far left and being controlled by the far left hasn't worked. It's because the quote unquote far left has very, very popular ideas. So if that were Bernie or Nina Turner at that debate against Mike Pence, what would they have done? Well, I can only imagine that they wouldn't have run away from a ban on fracking, but let's say, you know, hypothetically, they took Biden's approach, where he doesn't support an outright ban on fracking, but he claims he's not going to issue as many permits to frackers. Will you explain, listen, fracking in and of itself is not something that I'm going to ban, but I'm going to reduce the number of fracking, and I would like to ideally gradually phase it out, because this is contributing to climate change. And if we want a future, we have to stop polluting the planet for personal gain and profit. We we have to stop. Why aren't you advocating for phasing out fracking? Do you want us to frack in your backyard? Would you drink the water in a fracked neighborhood where it's poisoned? Do you understand that fracking causes earthquakes? Never be afraid to take the time to explain yourself. You know, single-payer Medicare for All has always been something that Democrats have supported, but the reason why we're talking about it so much now is because Bernie Sanders popularized it, and he popularized it by explaining what this means for people in a real concrete way. It means that you're going to be able to go to any doctor you want to, and that care is going to be free at the point of service. You'll get the same quality care that members of Congress get, that rich people get. Because he explained that so well, now the American people, they support Medicare for all. So Democrats have got to acknowledge that it's not bad to explain yourself. Copy what Bernie Sanders is doing. Learn from him. Even though he lost and he's not the Democratic Party's nominee, people agree with him. Exit polls during the Democratic Party primary show that people want Medicare for all. So the way that he has sold us on these policies is what Democrats have to do if they ever want to win elections, but I don't just want them to copy the rhetoric because Joe Biden has copied some of the rhetoric, at least when it comes to healthcare. He says that healthcare is a right when that's not true because you don't support Medicare for all. But don't just copy the rhetoric, copy the fucking policy and adopt the policy. Because if you truly want power and you want to win, being open to new ideas and populist policies is the way to do that. So, you know, if Bernie Sanders isn't going to be the leader of the Democratic Party, then I think that they can learn from him. Use the influence that he has to grow so the party can defeat Republicans. You know, you, you, you know, you know, the, you know, the thing, thing. you're getting nervous, man, man.